get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. With the, what are you doing? I'm limbering up. For what? You, you, people think that the fighters are the only athletes, the only ones that have to prepare themselves for these events. Now, these fight weeks are gruelling. You have to be an athlete to be able to promote these things properly and you have to sort of pick yourself up. You know, like if you're feeling a little bit flat or tired, you have to sort of, you know, like, Sometimes, you know, off the camera, I just sort of myself a little bit like, yeah, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Woo. <sighs> now we're ready, let's go. So you're saying you have to, <laughs> you have to be an athlete to promote? I was Jack. Oh, never know. No, but you do, you do need, I think in any job, you need to have a little bit of... Um, get up and go? Got to have get up and go. Um, yeah, just like, it's a bit tiring sometimes. You can't, you can't afford to be flat. If you're selling something, you can't afford to be flat. Let's go back to that famous car sales analogy, yeah? You're retired, you're in the office, a bloke walks in, you think, and he comes over, hi oh, mate, I saw that car out there in the showroom. Oh, the red one, mate? You know, yeah, that's the one. Oh, all right, let me see if I can find the keys. As soon as you've done that, sale over. Bloke's gone, it's an arsehole. Okay, I'm trying to give you a few quid and buy a car. What you want is, is... Morning, sir. Hi there, just saw the car. The beautiful red one on the showroom? Oh, sir, let me get the keys for that. That is an absolute steamer. You know what I mean? Then the guys, although the guy would probably go, oh, what a bad end. But he would, he'd be up, you know. So why don't you do a little 20 second skit of how not to promote this fight? Okay. Well, you know, I mean, this is, this is how some promoters would do it. Well, you know, um, we've got, um, We've got Brooke, um, Golovkin, and um, you know, that's the the fight. That's the mid. Uh, what he's doing is he's going up um, from from um, welterweight, and he's fighting the middleweight. So that's quite interesting. And um, we've also got uh, Charlie Edwards. He's fighting um, C -C -C uh, Cass Cassie 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 Mero. Um, he's from um, abroad, and uh, you know. That's a, but it's, you, you've got to, you've got to be able, you know. I don't think it's very particularly. Is it a skill to sell a fight? I just think you've got to be able to have a big trap, and you've got to be able to. But the thing is, is when you live and breathe it, the business. I don't need paper. Do you know what I mean? You don't. You ask me a question about our next six shows. I'll reel you off every single fight now. So, unless you live and breathe it, you can't do that. That's why some people will need like notes and you know, prompted about fights that are happening. I just know because I live and breathe it, so. So where do you draw the line between selling your fight, talking bollocks, mm. and saying what you actually think about the show and the well, fighters? I try and say what I think all the time. In terms of talking bollocks, it's not really talking bollocks, it's just sometimes you're going to go over the top. Which and, you, but you've ne never obviously been a part of. No, I don't go over the top, no. no. But that's, that's called selling a fight. Sometimes I'm so excited, I'm doing it subconsciously. I'm not, I'm not, I don't wake up in the morning going, I've got to sell this fight today. I've got to sell it, we've got to drive the fight. I just talk, I just get excited. And I, I, that's what I do, I, I sell things. Anything, I'm selling anything. I used to sell double glazing. Really? Yeah. Weather seal windows in Romford. When I was uh, 15 to 17, 6 till 8 p.m. after college, go to this little place in Romford, get the yellow pages out, and just phone everyone up, try and get our workmen and our salesmen round to the house to quote on windows and doors. Did you talk like you do now when you were between 15 and 17? Well, I didn't say, hi, this is Eddie from Weathersill Windows. We've got uh, Callum Smith challenging for the WBC silver title. And, but yeah, prob probably, probably. I mean, I, 
you know, my, my early life was growing up just sitting in my dad's study because he was working non-stop. Probably didn't have much time for me and I just sat there listening. And I think that's why perhaps I talk like I do because, you know, just that's how I was brought up, just listening to him. And he's, he is an excellent salesman. Is there any part of you think slightly that you may have got this horribly wrong? Not really, because, no, because at the end of the day, it's my job to provide the opportunities for the fighters. And this is a huge opportunity for Kelbrook. It's, it's a horrifically tough fight, but in terms of everything else associated with it, course payday, course profile, it delivers on every level. And... Um, Every day that it inches closer to this fight, I'm more nervous, but I'm also more confident. Like me and you just had a coffee, and you're like, I don't know if you've actively said this to like, you know, to, to people, but you believe Kelbrook, or you did believe Kelbrook would win this fight. I don't know if you still believe he would win this fight, but you just said to me in the cafe, you know, I said to you, I watched your video of him. I can't believe every day he's becoming more and more confident in this fight. And you went to me, Something's going to happen in this fight. And I said, what, what do you mean something's going to happen? You went, I don't know, but something's going to happen. Did you or did you not say that? Yeah, I believe, it, you... I believe it's not going to go to plan. Because mm. the plan, if we're being honest, is that... Well, the plan is from their side. Yeah, is that they come side, out and they look great. From and they, the yeah. outside, everyone looking in. I don't think, as good as Golovkin is, I don't think this can go to plan. Because I think Brooke's too good and I think he's too determined. But again, it's what the size of the fight is because you two, we could, you know, you could debate with someone all day about how this fight's going to play out. <clears throat> um, all I can tell you is, never seen Kel Brook so confident into a fight, and he's fighting Gennady Golovkin. Talking to him and listening to him talk, he's not talking differently to he done when he fought any other fighter. Well, he, he is. I mean, he's, he's a lot more excited. No, exci you know? yeah, excited, and obviously he knows who he's fighting, but what I'm saying is he doesn't come across as nervous, come across... He's excited. He's really excited for this fight. Really excited. Because he's he's bounced off the buzz of the fight. You know what I mean? He's, he, he, he turned up yesterday, looked around, saw like over a thousand people at, at Covent Garden, just thought, this is it, this is my moment. This is the fight I've been waiting for. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Um, and I, you know, I keep feeling sick about that moment when, you know, we all climb out of the ring, sit down in the seat, and the guy, got the ref, says, seconds out, round one, boom, and they just come together, and it's just, I, oh, you know, I want him to do it so bad, and I, I know he can do it. I've asked this to a few people this week. Um, we've got an IBF World Weight Champion, 36 and on that we still don't know how good he is. A million percent, a million percent. And we're gonna find out. Because if he's not what we think he is, he does not beat Gennady Golovkin. But, you know, he talked to Naz yesterday. You know, Naz knows his boxing, he knows Kel, he's, he grew up with Kel. You know, and he's just, he said, I'm telling you, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And it's like, when you listen to people like that, you know, I mean, because everyone, thinks they're an expert, don't they? You know? So people say, no, I'm telling you, this is going to happen. Well, what, what makes you right? What makes me right? What makes Naz right? But generally, people who have been in the game and had that experience, you know, listen, we'll see, won't we? We can talk about it all day. Does Golovkin have to underperform for Kel to win? It would help. <laughs> and we're hoping that, oh, I hope he does. Um, but does the best Gennady Golovkin beat the best Kel Brook? Depending on how good Kel Brook is, we don't. I mean, I, I, like you said earlier, and I think one thing everyone will agree on is that we haven't, we've never seen the best Kel Brook. Yeah, whatever you think of Kel Brook, we've never seen the best of Kel Brook. So how many levels are there to go? Maybe one, you know, I said to Jane, maybe three, maybe five, maybe ten. And if there are those other levels, he can win this fight. But he's going to have to perform well beyond, you know, what he's, you know, any performance he's given so far, because he has to, because it's Gennady Golovkin. But again, we don't know, you know, I don't know. Maybe Gennady's not comfortable here. Maybe he doesn't like. You know, he walks out. He's 
I don't know, maybe he ain't had a great camp. Who knows? But yeah, they're all edges. I'd appreciate in this fight, for sure. Do you look back when you first signed him up until this point now and sometimes wish that you'd got him at Devon Alexander at the time, yeah, at course, Tim Bradley? Course, yeah, uh, yeah. Listen, I wish that the first time we got Devon Alexander, uh, he didn't get injured. And then the second time, Devon Alexander tore his bicep. You know, he would have beaten Devon Alexander and then we would have started this journey earlier. But nothing's ever straightforward with Kelbrook. But you know, geniuses have character flaws in any sport. You know, whether it's Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, whether it's George Best, whether it, you know, they're not wired up right. You can't, if you're that, that, if you excel at something and you're that crazy like Kelly's, he's not wired up right. And that's why he's behaving like he is for this fight. He's excited. He can't wait to fight Gennady Golovkin. Any normal, normal human being would be absolutely bricking it, wouldn't they? How can you look forward to fighting Gennady Golovkin? He's like, I can't wait, I can't wait, Babe going to get in there. I feel the power. No, I know. But because he's not wired up right. But to, to be that unbelievable fight, you can't be wired up right. Can't you be a nice bloke? Doesn't work like that in boxing. So, um, I don't know, I mean, what, three days to go? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely the, the most on edge or nervous or tentative about a fight I've ever been. You know. Have you heard that stat? I don't know how true the stat is, but only 5% of professional boxers go on to be British champions. Have you heard that before? I think that's bollocks. Why? I don't think it's anywhere near 5%. Oh, OK. Well, I heard it was 5%. Well, how so, can it be? How many divisions are there and how many fighters are there? That's just what I read. I'm not, I'm not saying it's accurate. That's why I asked you. Well, where did you read it? I can't remember, but I did read this. If it was on Twitter, it must be true. I don't know, but yeah, I would say I would say it was more like 1%. OK, well, point is anyway. If Kel Brook... Um, Kelbrook was to retire today. Mm -hmm. um, what does Kelbrook look back on his career? If he was to retire today, yeah. as one everything before domestically. Before the Golovkin fight. Before the Golovkin yeah. fight. Um, one everything domestically. I would, look back on it. I would look back on it and say, what a waste. Waste. Yeah. And that's when you know someone has a special talent. Like other people, you might go, listen, if he was to retire today, what a career he's had. You know? Went out, won the British title. Won the world title in America. Wow. Not with Kilbrook. Not with Kilbrook. He's, he's too special a fighter to. One world title is not enough. It, it would be. He would have underperformed. If he finished his career now, I would look back and say, fucking hell, what a waste. You know? And, and you should gauge off that the belief we have in him, how good he is as a fighter to be able to say that about a guy that's travelled to America and won a world title and, and, and 36 and 0. Let's talk a little bit about obviously the undercard. Mm. Um, two world title fights. Mm. First of all, uh, Charlie Edwards. Yeah. It's a very difficult fight. It's a great fight. I, fight yeah, I'm, I'm again, you, know, you talk about being nervous for fights. I'm not as nervous, but it's close for Edwards against Casimiro. I mean, again, you know, you take... You, you, you take these chances, and it's not really us taking the chance, it's, it's the whole team taking the chance, and, and you, we're all in it together. So when our Heyman's guys phone me up and say, listen, we've got um, John Riel Casemiro, have you got any flyweights? I went, you know, I've only got Charlie Edwards, only had eight fights. They went, well, okay, well, he's available, you know, if you want to use him, if you want any guys to challenge him for the world title. So then I phoned Cali FI. And I said, uh, can you make flyweight? And he went, no. I went, oh, that's a shame. I've got a world title fight against John Real Casemiro. And then got off the phone and thought, let me watch him. Anyway, went on, watched him. Thought, fucking hell. He's good he is, isn't he? I think Charlie Edwards could beat him, you know. And then I text Charlie Edwards and went, listen, crazy idea, and I'm going to speak to your team, because I certainly ain't letting you make the decision. 
John Real Casemiro, and he, Charlie knows boxing like the back of his hand. What well, the IBF champ, the guy who beat Brewer wrong or whatever his name is. Yeah, he went, I'll fight him, I'll beat him. That was the first thing that replied. I said, okay, thanks, Charlie. Anyway, spoke to MGM, spoke to um, uh, Danny Vaughan, and they went, okay, just take your time. Charlie, on the other hand, is texting me. Have you spoken to him? What did they say? Have we got the fight? They went away, they looked at the tapes, they spoke to Charlie, come back, and they went, you'll have it. Sorted out the money, done. So it's a decision that, you know, it, again, it could be one of those where everybody looks like a genius, or it could be one where everyone goes, what are you doing putting a kid in his night fight? But it, Charlie Edwards isn't a kid who, you know, turned pro with 20, 30 amateur bouts and with little experience. And, you know, he's a guy who's got a stellar amateur career, a lot of experience. And um, this is way too early for Charlie Edwards, this world, too, this world title fight. But can he beat Casemiro? The answer is yes. Again, he will have to produce a performance well beyond anything we've ever seen. You know, this is not, no disrespect, this is not Luke Wilton, this is not Louis Norman, this is a two-weight world champion from the Philippines. And let me tell you, mate, they've made a different stuff out there. And when I see him yesterday, you just, you've only got to look at him. You know how tough this kid's going to be. But Charlie is significantly bigger, and his engine is phenomenal. But he's going to have to go through, trying to get into Charlie's head, and they, they know this anyway, and the same with Kel. There are moments in this fight where you're, you are going to have to go through hell. So you have to mentally and spiritually prepare yourself for that moment. And when it means so much to you, like it does to Charlie and Kel, I think you can do that. I, I really feel, same with Darren Barker, you know, when he beat Gil. You know, he worked on his mind in that fight. That was uh, one of those moments where I'm not, I'm, I refuse to be beaten. It's not happening. And that's why he got up from the body shot. You know, every other fight, he would never have got up from that body shot. But it was that moment he said to himself, no, this has to happen. And you can prepare yourself for that all camp and on fight night and everything. And, and Brooke and Edwards are going to have to do that because they're going to have to, they're going to get hit hard in these fights and have to be prepared to go through some horrible pain and show some unbelievable gonads to win this fight. Hall and Haskins, mm. the ring match. Um, yeah, well, some little clips of the yeah, really good. I mean, the there's there's a nice nice bit of uh, a grudge or rivalry in this match, and it's great to have a, a domestic world title clash on a card. Stuart Hall is our guy, you know. I mean, you've got really for us, you know, you've got Stuart Hall and Charlie Edwards could could both become world champions from the Matchroom stable on Saturday, and you've got Kel Brook could become the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. So that's a big night for us. And um, I like Stuart Hall a lot. He's a real old school fighter. He's got a tricky fight against Haskins. You know, you saw Haskins at the workout yesterday. He's got skills to burn. He's very, very fast, very, very awkward. And Stewie, you know, it's not a fight where you can just say, I'm just going to sit on him all night and just jump all over him because you're going to get hit by Haskins if you do that. So he's got to be smart. He's got to, you know, he's got to have relentless, uh, educated pressure in this fight. And I believe he can beat Haskins. And I'll be, you'll see, Plenty from me on Saturday in terms of emotion, because Edwards, are, you know, to pull that off would be a major coup, and for Stuart Hall to become a two-time world champion, I would be really chuffed for the for the, for the guy, and obviously Kel Brook, so and, and Waldy, Martin Ward against Andy Townend, in in a, you know, every now and again you come up at different levels in your career, you come up in one of those moments where if you lose. You're unlikely to be the fighter that you that you wanted to be. Does that make sense? And for Martin Ward, you know, for, for Edwards Casemiro, that's that's different. But for Martin, this is that moment because when I saw Martin Ward in the gym five years ago with Tony Sims in in Hainal, I thought this kid is one of the best young talents I've ever seen. And he was unlucky; things didn't work out his way to get in the London Olympics, turn pro. And it's been a little bit stop-start, you know, he's had his problems, obviously. Um, but against Andy Townend, it's a fighter who is so hungry with Steffi Ball to win that British title. He can really, really punch. And I think that is a classic 50-50 fight for the Lonsdale belt. And I'm really looking forward to uh, Ward against Townend. On the bill as well, um, Callum and Paul Smith. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what's the objective beyond Paul Smith, obviously, fighting this card? What, what's the, the long-term thing for Paul the Smith? The long-term, look, I want to, you know, I feel like Paul Smith did enough in the Abraham and Andre Ward fights to warrant another fight. I think we're going to get to a stage with Paul Smith where, you know, this will be his third fight back since the Ward fight. And after that, it, there has to be a big fight. And, you know, you wait so long for a world title fight, maybe there's another fight. Maybe that's Martin Murray. I don't know. You know, maybe that's the winner of Carolis against Zoiga. That was the original plan, and then it was a draw. So really, the, the you know the point of Paul Smith being on the card is to be quite honest to tick him over and wait for that world title shot. For Callum, on Monday, the WBC will call a mandatory against Badu Jack. So for him, he's defending his silver title probably for the last time. Um, the point of having him on the bill is he's in a fight against a guy that should test him. He's operated at a decent level. Um, you know, we saw in the last fight with Callum Smith, everyone was moaning about the opponent, end up being a, a seven or eight round very good fight. And perhaps that's because Callum is mentally biding time, you know, for that big fight. I want to keep his profile high. I want him to improve. I feel like every time he has a fight, he's going to improve. So therefore, when he fights Badu Jack or whoever it is, he's going to be a better fighter than he is when he, if he would have fought him in June, something like that. So, um, so the WBC have called a mandatory. Yeah, uh, be on Monday. Jack, yeah, but um, yeah, they could listen. That I know they're, they're talking to unify. Yeah, I don't know whether that will happen or not. I think it's more likely it will than it won't. But I don't think the money's there for that fight that those guys both want. So I don't know how it's going to play out. But um, you know, if they do, then the winner will have to fight Callum Smith within 90 days. Great spot for Callum Smith. You know, he can fight on Saturday. He can go and watch Liam. He can just prepare himself for that shot at the world title. Connor Ben. Connor Ben. He's fighting again. Fourth fight. Um, we're going to put Connor Ben on at about 10 past six. We're going to go live on six, and you've got a free view hour from six till seven, and then we go seven with Ward Town in. Um, I want. Connor just to come away from the 17,000 people at 10 o'clock at night, singing his name, chanting his name, and just let him do his work. You know, going at 10 past six, there'll be four or 5,000 in the arena, be a little bit more low key. Um, great new deal with Reebok that we've done with him, um, we announced today. And just, just let him not worry about doing all this to the crowd and stuff like that. Just show your improvements as a fighter and there have been significant improvements and I'm very excited about his career. There's some quick updates from you. Go for it mate. Right. First of all, uh, how's Land of, Land of Giants? Well this is taking a bit of a, a twist actually. Um, so major news regarding the Land of the Giants that it might not no longer be the Land of the Giants. Right. It might now be the night, or no, the night of the Giants. I would like everybody who watches this video to hashtag which one you prefer, Land of the Giants or Night of the Giants. I don't know if you saw the interview with James Heldy yesterday, but we, we had a small sample of people at the boxing, probably seven or eight, and we said, Night of the Giants, Land of the Giants. Everyone went with Night of the Giants. So I need clarification from my friends and my customers, which is you wonderful people. Night of the Giants or Land of the Giants? Please hashtag. Um, our, st our statistical analysts will count them at the end and, and see which one we're going to go Just with. Just to clarify, Night of the Giants was your name, Land of the Giants was my name, correct? Was it? Yeah, from the first one. From because first when you hashtagged me the other day, you said Night of the Giants. No, the land of the giants. No, check it back. How much on the bet? I'll do it after, but... Score? Okay, done. Right there. Oh dear. That was an easy, that was an easy, easy. Right Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Look at the um, the second answer as well. That's where I got confused. What does it say? That guy. What did he put? That interview had me creeping. No, the next one. Thought it was Night of the Giants. all you'll ever get off me. Oh. Okay, like so anyway, back to the, uh, the hashtags. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, no, I can't. No, don't be daft. I can't pay you no, money. We should on it, thank you. Come on. No, listen, yeah. don't feel bad. Come on, we're it. all public school boys. No, you're not, you're a hustler. Go on. <laughs> um, so, Night of the Giants, Land of the Giants. Is that your only dilemma about this? No, we've got to make the fights. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I need to, I spoke to Keller um, well, quite a lot actually, but I sort of said, right, does Chisora want to fight White or not? We need to know. Because I want to go on sale with this, I want to make an announcement, not next week, but the week after. Does Chisora want to fight White or not? Because Tyver will fight White or someone else will fight White. So, you know, Dave Allen against Sam Sexton. As the full fight? Yeah. Well, right, not the third one. You didn't. Or would you not settle for that one? No, we need Chisora and White. Okay. We okay. need this. Well, these people have got to want to fight, haven't they? You know, I mean, so everybody tweet Chisora. Everyone, you ain't got to tweet Dylan. So look, what do you want it or not? Night of the Giants, Land of the Giants. Are you a giant? Do you want to stand among giants? Do you want to walk with giants? What what fight from <laughs> the three proposed is? Give me an order of. Likeliness. Likeliness and uh, Parker against Price, is number one. Likely. Yeah, I think that's that, I think that's pretty much like if everything else falls into place, that's the one that I, I'm concerned about at least. I think that's almost ready to go. Right. Um, again, I I like the Pulev fight for AJ. I think it's a real good test. Um, he's not the, the Pulev. Don't seem to be, you know like chomping at the bit to fight AJ, which is like mental. You fight eliminators, you get a shot at the world title, surely you've got to take it. And then the money's good, by the way. Um, and Chisora White, I don't really know. I mean, Dylan's ready to go. But Chisora, you know, what does, I mean, Chisora turned down a lot of money to fight AJ, to fight Pulev instead for like a fifth of the money. So, I don't know. Where are you with White and Lewis at the moment? That is pretty much done. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that is um, pretty much done. It's we're speaking to the board about that thing being for the British title because like we can't, you know, they turned down Allen. Sexton didn't want it, and then or he was injured or whatever. Then um, Lewinson's coming off a big win in China. Um, what about him for the British? I think the board will accept that, and then we'll do that in Glasgow, the South London Rumble. In Glasgow. Battle of Brixton. The Battle of Brixton. All the Scots would be like, fuck Brixton. Battle of, Bri Battle of Brixton in Glasgow. Yeah, good fight, good fight actually. Um, Jerry Klitschko was yep, formally announced, announced yep, today, yep. Uh, as expected for the 29th mm -hmm. at the Manchester Arena. Um, yeah, it's on. For the moment. I mean, it's got so many twists and turns, hasn't it, that fight? I hope it finally happens. Um, you know, I won't believe it'll happen until they're all in the country on fight week. But for the sake of heavyweight boxing and, uh, and also for future opponents for AJ, I hope that the 29th of October happens. Um, so, yeah, I mean, fingers crossed for no pull outs, disruptions, UCAD, contractual disputes, whatever. And hopefully they can just get in the ring there and get that fight done. Is the winner of that fight a possibility for next year, either way, <coughs> Fury or Klitschko? A hundred percent. You know, we're looking at November 26th, March the 4th, and then June or July. And that June or July opponent has to be Fury, Klitschko, Hay, Wilder, one of those guys. So, you know, you're, 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 you guys are close now. You're close to the heavyweight pawn. Um, I was at the GQ Awards last night. I saw a picture of you and uh, Michael Caine. He was yeah. really interested in having a photo of me, I have to say. How did it go? Michael, um, big fan, mate. Do you mind if I get a photo? 
Go on then. Thanks, Michael. Did you mention about Clough and Brooks? No, he said, he actually said to me, he went, um, I think Kel Brook inside four rounds and just to let you know, I pressed the red button uh, before I popped out to the GQ Awards and the pay per views already ordered. So. That's one in the bag. Yeah. But um, now, on a serious note, AJ obviously won Sportsman of the Year last night. Great to see him, you know, in that kind of company. It's great for the sport. So you got a great reception, Nicola Adams. She presented the award. Wow. The place went mad for her. Hang out with Lewis Hamilton as well, was it? Yeah, you know, Lou was on the table. You know, we, we were chilling. Um, you know, talking racing, you know what I mean? Talking cars. And, do you know who else was there? Ricky Gervais. Was he really? Yeah. Was he we really? had a chat. Sorry, that just cut out. You had a chat with Ricky Gervais? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, just a little one. Yeah. Man, he's on my list. I have a list of what? I've got top five, haven't I? Top five what? I don't, or is that a people, question we don't want to talk about on here? No, just, people I want to interview. Who, who else is on the list? No, I don't want to tell you. But who else is on the list? Ricky Gervais yeah. is one. Floyd? No, because I've interviewed Floyd. Ah. If you call him walking past and going, Floyd, Floyd, yeah, man. That, is that the end of the interview? No, I did, I've got a couple of minutes with him when he's in London. A couple of minutes? Yeah, I'd like to sit down, but... How long was it? Three minutes. Was it, it over three minutes? Probably not. Was it over two minutes fifty? It was sort of between two fifty and three. Okay. Under or over for a double or nothing on that score? Two fifty six. If it was longer than two fifty six, I owe you another score. If it was less than two fifty six, you owe me that score back. The problem is the video time we'll have to actually look at the actual length of interviews because right. the adverts okay we'll do that later then that didn't work all right uh but ricky gervais yeah ricky it? gervais that's one al al yeah Heyman. yeah so. barney was on it but barney's now off Done. it yeah so does that have you added anyone or is it now down no, I've, added, I've added who else um James Corden. I spoke to James. I did speak to James. When? When AJ did the Showtime deal. I spoke to James. He was actually what, very helpful pushing that deal for us, stateside. I spoke to James on the phone. Conor McGregor. Big fan. Big fan. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor. Yeah. That'd be a great interview. And John. John Wishhausen. Yeah. Really? He might do that. We might make that happen. He won't. So out of Team a... Casimero in the house. They are. So from that five, what ones could you make a possibility? John. Because <laughs> he works for me. Oh, that's the most link. Um Al, no. No chance. Ricky Gervais, yeah, I mean, let me just let me call him. <laughs> no reception. Um, I think, I think you could, I think, I think, right environment, you could get Corden and Gervais. Who are you going to get on Saturday? If you could there's pull, a few, there's no, like, you, all the game, right. the game of Thrones, yeah, I don't, really, I don't really, nor do I, but oh. like, uh, Mark Wahlberg, he's coming. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, he's coming. Does he speak what? English? Yeah. Zlatan speaks all languages. Yes. Okay. Um, can you have a word with him? No, I'm being Zlatan. Serious. Can you just say to him, look, you could do that, come on. Okay. Imagine that, Zlatan or IFL, that'd be good. Um, Vlad's coming. Vlad? Vladimir. Is he really? Yeah. Bernard Hopkins. Are you serious? Working for HBO. I'm mates with Bernard anyway. Uh, I am actually mates Not with Bernard Matthews, Bernard no, Hopkins. Hopkins. yeah, no. I, I am actually mates with Hopkins, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, Vlad's here as well. Because yeah. oh, we've got a press conference Monday. on Monday. Yeah. Alright, have you got anything else you want to add? Not really, I'm looking forward to today. I'm going to try and get Haskins and Hall at it. So this is pre-press conference. 
So fingers crossed, if I do my job correctly. There'll be another interview. Yeah. Talking about Eddie Hearn reacts. Yeah. Okay. Eddie, thank you very much for talking to our Always today. a pleasure. How long was that? Uh, about 32 minutes. Okay. I should have asked you to guess the money back. Oh, what are you like? You're always full of fun and games, aren't you? Um, yeah. Have you watched the David Brown film? No, have you? Yeah. Any good? Yeah. Sure? I like it. Do you watch, do you, I was talking about James, MC Grinder. Do you watch that show? I've seen, I've seen what you're talking about, but I haven't actually watched it. It is so funny. Like, properly. It's funny. Okay. All right. Speech in a bit. Eddie thank you very much. Thank you.